My name is Jason Herr. I work in IT services for Albright College. I'm going to go over some of the basic functionality and some of the extended functionality of the technology that we'll be using in the classrooms to assist instruction. The podium is designed to allow you to control all the technology resources within the classroom. There's a simple 7-inch LDC screen in the left-hand side of the podium that allows you to turn on and initiate many of the actions. There is a shelf for holding a laptop if you bring it in. There's a built-in screen. Additionally, on the side of the podium, there is a document camera for being able to do overhead displays. I'm going to start by pressing power on and the center button on the display. It will take a little bit of time for the system to warm up. On the screen, it will let you know when it's ready. When it's ready and you want to begin, there are eight buttons to allow certain functionality to occur. The first button I'm going to select is the Podium PC. By selecting a source, and it wouldn't matter what source it is, it could be the DVD player or the VHS, it automatically causes the screens to come down and power on the projectors. Again, you'll have to wait a little bit because having the power go to the projectors and have them power up takes a little bit of time. But in a couple of moments later, you should have activity. Once the projectors are warmed up, they'll be displaying the image that you select. In this case, I selected the Podium PC. I'm going to do a normal Albright login by putting in my username and password. It allows me access to all Albright computers. Once this is up and running, I could choose to launch PowerPoint. I could launch Internet Explorer. I could provide content to our students. The basic display also allows you to bring in your own laptop and connect it up to the system. By selecting the second button, which is labeled Laptop Digital, allows you to connect your computer into the system using uh, either its DisplayPort or HDMI. Those are two digital formats used for getting display information from your laptop into the system. By selecting Laptop Digital, you now allow its video source to display to both screens. There's also controls for uh, DVD. VHS, and the document camera. It's important to note that as you go through each one of these, it takes the system just a moment to connect to the device digitally, pull it, and realize how to communicate with it. So if you don't see the result immediately, be patient, give it time to communicate, and then it will display the image that's appropriate for the device you've selected. For the DVD and VHS player, the controls are on it to actually manipulate it. So after you've inserted your DVD, or VHS tape, you can cause them to play. Fast forward, stop, by simply pressing the control button on the screen. As you can hear and see, images and sounds are now being routed to the speakers and screens. We've tried to set the buttons up for ease of use. Along the top, there are five buttons that allow you to select either the built-in podium PC, the laptop connected through a digital interface, the DVD player, the VHS player, and the document camera. The second row of buttons allows you to get help through the help screen. It allows you to also connect your laptop using an old VGA connector type. There are also some pairings where you can do the Podium PC and the DVD player at the same time, or the Podium PC and the VHS player, or the Podium PC and the document camera. These eight configurations were designed to provide quick access to screen outputs. Next to those eight buttons, is another one called Advanced Selection. Within the Advanced Selections, you're able to more granularly select what device goes to what screen. So if you actually wanted the <clears throat> document camera to be on the screen one and the DVD player to be on screen two, you can make that selection based off of your academic, based off of your instructional needs. On the Advanced Selection page, in addition to the controls that allow you to select what inputs go to what screens, there's also the capability of having the screens be manipulated. You can send screen one up, or have screen one go down. Those controls are also available for screen two. In addition to the screen controls, you can turn on and off the projectors. The LCD control panel allows you to manipulate the screens. In addition to those controls, over here on the wall, beside the screen, our controls allow you to send the screen up, screen stop, and screen down. So another control that's available to you on the LCD screen is the volume control. We typically recommend that you start at about 75% volume 
when playing any of the sources for audio. It's got a fairly wide range. It may take a little bit of time to actually adjust the right volume level, but it has been set up this way to accommodate the different types of volumes coming off the different devices. So on the control, there is a volume up button and a volume down button. So on the podium in the left-hand corner is a thing called a cable cubby. In there are all the types of cables you need to connect to devices that you've brought to the classroom for use in instruction. At the moment, I'm actually going to reach into the cable cubby, pull out the digital connector for connecting my laptop into it, and this will allow me to carry both audio and digital video signals over to the system to be displayed onto the projectors. I have to make sure, having connected into my laptop, then I select laptop digital. If I had used the older VGA style, I would pull the same cable out, connect it over into my laptop. I'd have to make sure I also connect the audio jack that's connected to the VGA cable into the laptop to make sure both the video and audio sources go. And then again, make sure that I select laptop VGA on the display. That makes sure that the system is pulling video sources and audio from the VGA input for the laptop. Another available resource in the cable cubby is a network cable. If your laptop or device doesn't support connecting the wireless, which is pervasive throughout all the Science Center, you can draw out the network cable. Plug it into your device and your device will now have connectivity to the internet and the rest of the college's resources. If you need to use the document camera as an overhead display, First, on the LCD control panel, select the document camera button. Then come over to the side of the podium, pull the drawer out. The document camera should be off, so you'll have to power it on. You'll have to lift the camera and light arm, rotating it up. Take your image source. Place it on the docking camera. You may need to adjust where the camera is focused or how much it has zoomed in or out to get the information to display in a legible format for your audience. When you're done, it's important to remove your media, power off the unit, fold the arms down, the shorter arm folding down first and flat. Rotate the camera head around and then slowly close the drawer. If you're going to continue your instruction, you'll have to select another input source like Podium PC or Laptop Digital, depending on what item you're trying to use. When you're finished with instruction and you're ready to turn off the system, in the upper right hand corner of the LCD display is a button labeled system off slash exit. Press that. You'll be presented with a confirmation page that allow you to turn off the system or hit cancel and go back to using the components. It's important to remember that if you hit power off, there's a significant delay before restoring the system to a fully operational state because it has to warm up the projectors again. Thank you for your time. If you have any additional questions or need assistance with any of the components within the technology podium in the classrooms, please don't hesitate to call IT Services Help Desk 610-921-7676.